Parliamentary Association is one of the oldest established organizations in the Commonwealth and today we have the honor uh, to have with us Mr. Stephen Twigg, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and he is also a former member of Parliament uh, of the United Kingdom, uh, Ivan. And we warmly welcome you, uh, Secretary General, uh, to the Parliament of Sri Lanka. And it's an honor to have uh, you with us today. Um, so just to start um, this small dialogue, um, could you just explain to us uh, what is the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association? Well, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm delighted to be here uh, in the Sri Lanka Parliament. The Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, as you said, is an old organisation established over 100 years ago. And we bring together the parliaments and the legislatures of the Commonwealth. So the countries of the Commonwealth, like Sri Lanka, the United Kingdom, India, and so forth. But also, a lot of countries also have sub national parliaments, for example, in India, the United Kingdom, South Africa, and we represent them as well. And our job is to champion effective, independent parliaments to do their jobs well. Thank you. So the Commonwealth uh offers, uh, the Commonwealth uh, Parliamentary Association offers online courses uh, with the intention of creating uh, a central learning hub for the Commonwealth Parliamentarians, uh, the staff. Um, so we would love to hear from you a bit more about this uh, initiative. Thank you. So there is a lot of expertise in the parliaments of the Commonwealth, both amongst those who are elected, but also crucially among the staff of those parliaments. So I think the core principle of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association is mutual learning, learning from each other. And in that spirit, two years ago, we launched the CPA Parliamentary Academy. This is available to any CPA member or member of staff, any parliament, if you work in a parliament, either elected member or as a staff member or another appointed member, you can access this at www.cpahq.org and it is a suite of courses to support parliaments to do their job well. Introductory courses, courses about parliamentary procedure, but also courses on important issues like the Sustainable Development Goals, a course we'll be launching later on this year. Courses to support more women to be members of parliament. Courses to support speakers and presiding officers, which is a course that we'll be developing and launching very, very soon. Speaking of um, uh um, encouraging women. Uh, how does the Commonwealth intend to ensure that there is more youth uh, and there is more gender equality and diversity among the parliamentarians, um, among the parliaments uh, and parliamentarians, uh, also staff uh, in the Commonwealth? It is such an important principle that parliaments should reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. And women, of course, are not just part of the population, they are a majority of the population. And we know in our own membership, we have some parliaments where there are sadly no women parliamentarians at all. Others, like Rwanda in Africa, where the majority of members are women. New Zealand, which recently reached 50% women. And so what we seek to do is to support our parliaments to be gender sensitive, to work to represent the interests of the whole of society, but in particular to increase the number of women in Parliament. But you're right to say it's also about other groups, young people, as you say, persons with disabilities, uh, a vital priority for us, and minority groups, ensuring that different communities are represented in our parliaments so that that diversity is genuinely reflected when laws are made and when government is held to account. What sort of challenges, if I may ask, uh, that the uh, uh the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association face in terms of um, advocating towards gender equality and youth representation and persons with disabilities in your experience? Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question and I can you know, speak from personal experience of having been uh, a member of Parliament myself in the United Kingdom. We have seen in recent years in the UK a big increase in the numbers of women elected to Parliament, but if you look back just 30 years, the numbers were much, much smaller. I remember the day that I was elected 26 years ago, a member was elected, Anne Begg, who was a wheelchair user. And some of the challenges for her as a wheelchair user in the very old buildings of the Palace of Westminster in London. And so 
often on disability, they are our practical issues of whether parliaments are properly ready to enable persons with disabilities to work there, they need to be, but also there can sometimes be stigma, prejudice, discrimination faced by minority groups, whether that's by persons with disabilities, ethnic and religious minorities, sexual minorities. So there's a lot of different specific aspects. The fundamental principle for us in the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association is to be anti-discrimination and to enable a parliament that is truly inclusive of the full diversity of society. Uh, Secretary General, you just mentioned uh, during your conversations with the Honourable Prime Minister, uh, with our Secretary General, uh, that this is your first visit to Sri Lanka. Um, so what is your purview of Sri Lanka and the Parliament of Sri Lanka? It is my first visit. I hope it's the first of many. I look forward to coming uh, back to Sri Lanka, to seeing other parts of the country because it's been a short visit, very focused on meetings here in Colombo and I hope to venture further afield next time. But I'm very struck uh, meeting with parliamentarians and others here that on the one hand the country faces some huge challenges economically and politically but there is a vibrant politics, a vibrant civil society and I hope those voices, including the voices of young people, are heard as Sri Lanka shapes its future. So finally, what message would you like to uh, give to all the young uh, people and um, women, persons with disabilities, uh, to our people uh, who are wanting to be a part of parliament? So one of, the, one of the challenges that parliaments face across the world is to be relevant. We live in an age in which there is often a lot of cynicism. There isn't the deference that there used to be, and in many ways that is a good thing. But parliaments have to adapt and change if they're to remain relevant, and in particular to reach out to young people, to reach out to those from lower income communities, to reach out to women, to minorities, to be genuinely representative. And part of that is about who gets elected to Parliament, that that should reflect that diversity. But part of it is also outreach. We were talking previously about outreach and education, the positive use of social media uh, by parliaments and by parliamentarians to reach out to people. And if those things are done, then I remain optimistic that we can really engage the full diversity of society here in Sri Lanka, in the United Kingdom, and in all of the other countries of the Commonwealth in the future. Thank you, Secretary General. And with that, uh, we uh, come to an end, uh, given our short uh, interview. Uh, like you said, we hope, uh, even though this is your first visit to Sri Lanka, this will be the first of many more to come. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your visit. Uh, with the hopes of seeing you soon, we bid you farewell until we meet the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association once again. Thank you. Thank you.